I'm Rosie Stanko. I'm your host today on a show called Psychological Insights. And with me today is Dr. Robert Hamm. He's the creator of this um, series that you'll be seeing on, um, on television. And also, um, he is a psychologist here in West Hartford. And we're going to talk to him in just a second. I just want to let you know that today we're going to talk specifically about um, a technique and uh, a type of um, uh, element that he uses in his practice. It's called autogenic training. So first of all, I'd like to welcome you, Dr. Thank you. Robert Hamm. Thank you. Can you tell us just a little bit about yourself? Uh, sure. Uh, I'm a psychologist here in the town of West Hartford. Um, I've been practicing here in the state of Connecticut for uh, over 30 years. Um, and uh, my office is uh, located in uh, West Hartford Center where I see uh, patients of uh, mostly adults and adolescents. Uh, and my focus in my practice is uh, mostly on uh, relationships, uh, personal growth and spirituality, uh, stress management um, and anxiety and disorders and, and mood disorders primarily. Uh -huh. Okay. I also teach at uh, Central Connecticut State University as an adjunct professor. Oh, that's mm -hmm. great. Um, so today we're going to talk about autogenic training. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah uh, it's, you know, it's a, a technique uh, used in um, uh, psychotherapy and has been used for many years, uh, uh, about 100 years now. Uh, yet, it's a little surprising that the term really isn't that widely uh, um, uh, understood. Mm -hmm. uh, ironically, um, uh, at my gym, uh, I, we have a, a TV screen and they have different kinds of health tips. Uh, and one, of the, one day I saw it right on the screen there that uh, it's one of the methods that they use that is widely used and recommended. Uh, and so it is uh, fairly commonly used, but the term yet is not uh, widely uh, understood. Okay. Uh, it's a kind of a, a relaxation meditative uh, exercise. Okay. Uh -huh. And so um, <clears throat> when you are seeing someone um, as a client, uh -huh. um, when would you use this particular type, this autogenic training? Uh, you can use uh, autogenic training for various purposes. Okay. Um, I use it frequently with many of my patients uh, for different purposes. Mainly, it's a foundation, um, a kind of a, uh, um, if you will, an auto-hypnosis technique, meditative exercise for stress management. Uh, particularly, therefore, effective for anxiety disorders. However, as with hypnosis, it's not exactly the same as hypnosis, uh, strictly speaking. It can be used for many different purposes. Um, it, uh, so uh, hypnosis was primarily and still is used often for pain management, and autogenic training can be used for that purpose as well. Mm -hmm. uh, for It can also be used for habit control, such as smoking cessation, uh, or for um, uh, uh, eating disorders. Uh, it can be used in sports medicine, uh, helping, uh, uh, helping uh, to enhance focus, mm -hmm. uh, self-esteem, um, and as I mentioned, uh, stress management and uh, anxiety disorders, which I think it's mostly, that's what I use it mo mostly for in my practice. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, it sounds like from what <coughs> you're saying then, this is not uh, a technique that you yourself develop. This is a technique that you use. Is that right? Or did you develop this? No, I didn't develop it. As I, as I said, they... <laughs> I happened were, to notice it on the screen. And yes, TV that it screen was somewhere else, and that right. it, this has sort of been around. For about 100 years, yeah. It, and when you say it's been around, are you talking meditation's been around? And meditation must be around way longer than this particular technique, correct? Yes, meditation has its origins in Eastern uh, philosophy, uh -huh. and, um, as many people know. So it's been around for centuries, uh, probably millennia. Um, autogenic training was introduced by two German psychiatrists um, 
uh, Johannes Schultz and Wolfgang Luda uh, in the 1920s and 30s. Uh, and they uh, developed this technique uh, based on uh, an influence from Emile Couet, uh, a French psychiatrist who uh, developed this uh, method. He called it moral or, or um, mental orthopedics. Um, and it was uh, um, adopted by William James, who was the, uh, some considered the founder of modern psychology. So it's been around for many years mm -hmm. and used in practice um, by many, you know, psychotherapists for various purposes. So the word training makes it sound like you have to do some stuff to learn it. Is yes. It, 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 does it take a while for a, a client to be able to use this or could you walk us through a little bit like what does this look like in terms of how would you have someone what would you tell someone or how would you introduce this to someone? Right. It, it is a training exercise, as the name implies. Um, <clears throat> many of my patients uh, misunderstand how uh, it's uh, applied. Um, it is actually uh, what I tell them. It's a conditioning exercise. Okay. In other words, you're teaching your autonomic nervous system how to relax. Mm -hmm. In order to do that, you have to, in a proactive fashion, practice on a regular basis. So it's not something you can do extemporaneously in any situation when you're feeling anxious. That's not practical and it's not effective that way. You do have to practice like any skill. Mm -hmm. You're teaching your autonomic nervous system how, uh, what it feels like to relax. So if someone were to come and see you and, I don't know, let's say they were having episodes with anxiety or something, and you said, I'd like to introduce you to this uh, autogenic training, um, you would give them the instructions of this is what you do and now you go home and you practice this? Does it sort of work like that? Uh, well, uh, not exactly. We actually do the training during the session. You okay. Know, today, um, there are... <laughs> Uh, on the internet, there are actually a lot of apps now that have been developed. Um, perhaps the most popular is called Headspace. Uh, so many of my patients have also discovered those and used those. Um, but uh, this is, uh, autogenic training is something that you actually do train your patient uh, how to do it in your office. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a brief technique. It only takes about 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, so uh, what I often do is we record the session. Mm -hmm. So many, many, most people have smartphones today. Yeah. And most smartphones have an, an app that's already installed on their phones called Voice Memo. Right. Uh, in the old days, I used to use more of a, you know, an old-fashioned tape recorder right. um, with a cassette tape. But uh, so I have them record the session. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I have them practice, and they should practice on a daily basis if they can, 10 minutes a day. 10 minutes a day. That's all it takes. Yeah. Yep. Huh. And so um, how is it different? I know there's lots of different types of meditation out there. Mm -hmm. This is a meditative practice, but would you say, does it take the patient into like a meditative state then? Yes, it, it, it is. I mean, there are many different uh, terms and uh, uh, forms of um, uh, relaxation training slash meditation. Right. Autogenic training is one of those, and it is a variant and similar to other meditative techniques. It's not the same as meditation exactly. Okay. Uh, meditation proper. I mean, meditation was developed mainly uh, for philosophical purposes uh, to help empty your mind. This is, is a mind emptying, uh, so to speak, uh, uh, exercise. Mm -hmm. Its purpose, though, is more focused on helping you to manage your stress and anxiety. But again, it also has other purposes. What I usually, for most of my patients, I teach them the foundation, which is in a series of just three exercises. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and. Uh, Autogenic training specifically involves two uh, components. Uh, so we start with a deep breathing exercise, mm -hmm. such as similar to what you would do, well, let's say, in a yoga class. Um, and then we uh, go into a, a body awareness visualization. Uh, and I have, so a, a 
we, during the session, the, the session is recorded, mm -hmm. uh, and this helps a patient to learn all of the steps uh, in case they're concerned that they can't remember all the, the different components of the exercise. And I'm told I have a calming voice, so it helps them to... <laughs> you do uh, have a calming voice. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, they, they find that sort of reassuring many of my patients. So. Okay. So, but you don't have to record the session to practice it. Right. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> what kind of results have clients gotten by using this? Uh, well, for most of my patients, uh, as I mentioned, I use this for stress management and anxiety disorders. Um, and uh, so they find that it helps them to learn, it helps them learn how to relax themselves instantaneously. So I just want to make sure I understand. So a person would come to you with whatever their issue is that they are working on. You would go through this training with them. They would then go home and practice it at home and spend 10 minutes a day doing, going through the exercise. Mm -hmm. And then when they are in a stressful situation, does it just automatically kick in? Or is that when they immediately like begin to practice it again? Or how, how does it, I guess I'm trying to figure mm -hmm. out like how does it enter into then being helpful in that particular situation? Because I thought before you said you don't want to use it exactly right at that moment exactly. necessarily. You yeah. want to well, you can imagine. train your body to know how to do yeah. this is what it sounds like. Yes, I mean you can imagine. Let's say you go into a situation uh, you, where you're feeling anxious. Let's say a social situation or you're giving a speech. Um, and you find yourself suddenly feeling anxious, you can't say, well, excuse me, I have to go practice my autogenic training for 10 <laughs> minutes, I'll be right back. Uh, so it's not very practical. Uh, and secondly, um, it, not practical and used in that way, uh, it takes time. Uh, so it generally takes about at least six weeks okay. for you to uh, notice a benefit. Uh, and, so, and you do have to practice regularly. And so then, does, oh, and the practice regularly is a, component of this. So you do have to practice it every day, like you would anything else if you were working out or... Exactly. Okay. It's more than just a component. It's necessary in okay. order for it. Because uh, again, uh, Rosie, the purpose is that this is a conditioning exercise and you're, te you're teaching, uh, I'm, I'm teaching the patient how to relax and how to associate uh, a, um, just a, a, an intention to relax with the ability uh, to uh, you train your your autonomic nervous system. Uh -huh. This is the involuntary nervous system uh, that regulates our breathing, our blood pressure. Um, <clears throat> how so to relax? When you're talking about that, you're talking about you're training something that's happening in the subconscious mind. In a sense, yeah, that's right. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So, um, so I'm guessing, and you're the psychologist, so you have to clarify for me. But when people feel anxious or fearful or whatever, is that like mind talk that's going on for them? And this is a way to sort of stop the little voice in the head? That um, well, in a sense, um, uh, it is, uh, you cue yourself when you use this to relax. Um, but the, uh, the beauty of this exercise is if you practice regularly over a, you know, a period of time, or usually about six weeks, two months, um, all you have to do is uh, cue yourself to tell yourself to relax and you are able to do so. It, it's quite remarkable mm -hmm. uh, that you uh, find that you have developed the skill, um, uh, and it is your subconscious mind, if you will, to relax instantaneously. You don't have to go through a 10-minute you know, exercise. It, it happens uh, instantaneously. And so I'm guessing, um, but you tell me again, is it different? I mean, it has to be different, but if I just say to myself, okay, take a breath, <laughs> slow your breathing down, Rosie, you know, aren't I kind of doing that in some way? I yes. mean, is it, you yeah. know, I mean, because when we get into situations that may be anxio mm -hmm. an anxious, anxiety producing, um, you know, at least for myself, I try to think about like, okay, focus on my breathing for a second, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. Some of us do that. Mm -hmm. is, so is it a similar sort of thing to that then? Is, is that what you're talking about? It's, it's instantaneous. 
Oh, okay. You know, all you have to do is to remind yourself to relax and your body does the rest. It's, you've already, through this, uh, through the practice that you've done over uh, several weeks, uh, you have, um, you know, it's like a Pavlovian classical right. conditioning. Right, it's like muscle memory or That's in, exactly this, right. in this way it is psych psychological memory. <laughs> That's right. It's, it's, it's something that you, you've trained your body to, uh, you know, how to do you, uh, so that uh, it's, uh, it, it, it becomes something that's like second nature. You don't deliberately do it. It's something that you, your autonomic nervous system has learned how to do on cue. And it sounds like um, this would be hugely beneficial to pretty much everyone on, for something. Oh, yeah, yeah. More and more people today are practicing meditative techniques uh, and uh, witness the, uh, you know, all the apps that are out there, right. you know, that people are taking to, <clears throat> to help them with sleep, uh, anxiety and stress, um, and uh, pain management. Uh, so it is something that anyone would benefit from, not just people with anxiety disorders. And so I know you have <clears throat> clients that come and see you regularly. Are you thinking about doing anything on a broader scale to get this information out to people to be able to do this? Or does it, do you feel like it really needs to be a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, kind of um, problem solving? Because I could see where people don't, maybe don't necessarily need to be clients, but they could mm. certainly benefit from knowing how to do this. Right. Well, you Have you thought about any of that before or no? Well, you're putting me out of practice now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't think you'll ever be out of <laughs> practice, it, quite honestly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it is something that, uh, I mean, this TV show, you know, yeah. and bring to uh, people's minds that, that these techniques, uh, many people know this, uh, but uh, it, uh, it is something that uh, is widely accessible and it can be of benefit to, you know, anyone. Um, you know, we, we, have, we live in a very stressful world, so, yeah. Um, That's true. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there are books that will give you instruction, or you can go on YouTube. I'm sure that there are many. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, or you can, as I said, they're available in many apps of very, you know, using right. uh, different varieties of this uh, exercise. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, can you talk about, mm -hmm. and um, just generally, um, any sort of profound changes that people have had in using this? Well, most people that, that I uh, treat using this method, it's for uh, stress management. Okay. And uh, when you practice on a regular basis over a period of time, uh, it can create uh, a dramatic effect in terms of your ability to lead a less stressful life. Um, it doesn't reduce the stresses in your life, of course, but right. it helps you to uh, cope uh, in a much more effective way. So and you're so, managing those in a different way. Or that's right. So it helps, you know, it helps my patients, and I've used it for myself, learn how to deal with stresses, uh, if, you know, that is just a part of our uh, everyday lives. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, and uh, so there are lots, as you said, different types of meditation. You can go online and or go to YouTube and have a guided meditation, but this is something that is different from that, right? In that it, it isn't just going in, into meditation or having some sort of meditation. Well, it, it is a, it's related to meditation, but it, it, there's, it's a sp specific uh, instruction uh, that first uses deep breathing. Uh, breathing is very uh, uh, essentially related to the relaxation response. It's the only physiological function that's regulated both by a voluntary and involuntary uh, nervous system. Mm -hmm. And that's a key element because we can deliberately change our breathing patterns and therefore it's a direct route to uh, regulating our autonomic or involuntary nervous system. Um, and uh, after uh, the patient begins the deep breathing uh, exercise, then the specific instruction is to have them focus on different body parts. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and the suggestions uh, that I offer them are to induce a feeling of warmth and heaviness. Uh, these were the suggestions that uh, uh, Schultz and Luda, the founders of this method, found were particularly suggestive that enabled uh, the relaxation response to be activated. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so, <coughs> from your understanding, um, what do you think happens in a, to a person that we get so, I know we face stress because that's coming in from the outside, but what happens to us that we freak out when we're, <laughs> when we're in, like one person can go up and give a speech and not even bat an eye and another uh -huh. person is, you know, in the back room like, you know, um, just about fainting because any minute they have to go up to the podium. Right. Do you have any sense of like what causes that kind of stuff for people? Um, well, it's like the age old uh, um, nature nurture problem. Uh, I think it's a combination. Some people are wired, so to speak, born uh -huh. yeah. with a predisposition uh, to stress and anxiety more than others. Okay. Can't do anything about that, you know. Right. Um, right. Though that's just our genetic makeup. Um, but beyond that, we do have control, and so I use um, uh, two basic methods to help people to learn how to manage their stress. One is the autogenic training exercises that, I'm, that we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. The other is uh, self-talk. Okay. Uh, so there's a term for it today, it's called cognitive therapy. Uh -huh. uh, so let's say for stage fright, I also teach patients how to change their self-talk. That, that what that might be self, sort of a subconscious uh, sort of belief, sy belief system or talk. So I teach them how to uh, change their way of thinking about the situation they're in deliberately with the, with the uh, statements that they're making to, to themselves, such as I'm on the stage here and look at everybody looking at me and I know that they're noticing all, the, all of the mistakes that I'm making. And so I help them to change uh, deliberately change the, the, the self-talk that they're engaging in. Okay. That I use in conjunction with the autogenic training exercise okay. to help them uh, to uh, change their physiological uh, and behavioral response to stressful situations such as that. I use this, uh, um, the autogenic training and self-talk method for all kinds of uh, problems. Mm -hmm. um, uh, depression, uh, especially for uh, social anxiety, mm -hmm. um, stage fright, uh, or uh, performance anxiety, mm -hmm. such as is used in sports medicine, etc. Yeah. So, do you also encourage, um, like meditation, yoga, and things like that? Does that complement the um, the training or the autogenic training, or does that make any difference if a person? participates in other types of meditative no, activities? No, I think it's good. Um, you know, a lot of people are practicing yoga today and I encourage that. I think it's good for your physical as well as your mental health. Uh, meditation exercise, certainly, if you are a practice meditator, you already have a leg up, you've already had some experience that enables you to benefit from this exercise, I think, more readily. Um, the only contraindication is that some patients who, uh, if a patient is in crisis, sometimes this exercise is not helpful and actually can make a patient more ex uh, anxious. So th it, it's rare, but it does happen in some instances where meditation, autogenic training is not appropriate in certain instances until the patient is out of a, a crisis. But ordinarily, for most people, mm -hmm. it's good for anxiety, it's helpful for anxiety and stress, uh, stress responses. Yeah. yeah. So um, you talked about cues before. There's mm -hmm. some element of a cue in this. Um, a cue, in my understanding, is like mm -hmm. somebody, let's say a smoker, every time they pick up the phone and start talking on the phone, they feel like they want to have a cigarette. Mm -hmm. That's to me is sort of a subconscious. Is that, that would be a cue, right? That a phone call sort of equates to now it's time to have a cigarette for yeah. some people. Right. It, you know, so when you talk about a cue, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Like, w w what are you talking about? Uh, well, um, it's, um, what I'm referring to is just a, um, a sort of a reminder that 
you would make to yourself that um, to relax. Uh, so uh, when I begin the patient through the uh, exercise, I, I tell them to every time they take a deep breath to tell themselves uh, silently to relax, and that becomes the cue. Uh, so it's a, a simple uh, verbal statement that the patient would make to themselves. Okay. Yeah. Um, so um, we're getting close to mm. the end of the show. I'm right. wondering, is there anything else that you that we didn't cover that you wanted to talk to or mention about this? Um, yes, yeah, so, uh, I would advise that um, w w if you practice this technique, to uh, give it time. Okay. Um, don't expect it to have dramatic results right away. As I say, it's a conditioning exercise. Right. Also, some people. <laughs> Even though it seems like it's a very simple thing, it's not an easy thing to do, meditation uh, and autogenic training, uh, because it's passive and mm -hmm. it only takes a little time, but it's amazing how difficult it is because when you sit in, in stillness, yes. um, what happens is that you create a vacuum or a vortex to empty your mind. And many people live very stressful lives and there's a lot of stresses we keep at bay in our subconscious. So when you sit in stillness, a lot of those disturbing or stressful thoughts can enter. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I teach patients to allow those thoughts to enter and then slowly allow them to drift away, bring your focus back. So it does take time. When you begin, your, your thoughts are often distracted. And I tell the patient, don't worry about that. Don't be distracted by it. Just allow your, those thoughts to gently pass away and bring your focus back. Um, and to stick with it, mm -hmm. um, because many of us don't want to practice because th then those thoughts do enter and uh, uh, we live very distracted lives. So those disturbing <laughs> thoughts, we keep them <laughs> at bay. So it does, uh, it does take discipline and, and patience. Yeah. And I do find anything that we do that takes discipline <laughs> anything that's seems worth to doing. be, right. you know, right. challenging for right. us. Yep. You know, a lot of people say <laughs> um, getting up and, and meditating first thing in the morning, and I think, mm. like, oh, there's so many things to do when you first get up, you know. To, do I really have time to sit down and do that for 10 minutes, you know, um, that sort of thing. Right, we can find Well, this all has been very interesting. Yeah. Um, can you let people know how they could get a hold of you or um, if they'd like to find out more or maybe um, become a client of yours, a patient of yours, that they could, where they can contact you? Uh, certainly. Uh, today everything is on the internet uh, and uh, if you Google my name, Robert Ham, PhD, um, uh, you'll find my website and you'll learn all about my practice and uh, how to contact me. Okay, uh -huh. and yeah. I'm assuming that you're taking patients. Yes. Okay, uh -huh. excellent. Uh -huh. All right, uh -huh. well, thank you so much. Thank it's you, It's been Rosie. wonderful chatting with you. Enjoyed and thank it. you for tuning in to this interesting discussion about autogenic training and how you might be able to do things for yourself to make your life less stressful and more purposeful. And uh, have a great day. This is Rosie Stanko, and we'll see you next time.